Right now, as you're watching this, the ground beneath 2.8 million people is trembling. Mount Sumeru, Indonesia's most relentless killer, just unleashed rivers of concrete down Java's mountainsides. But this isn't an eruption. This is something far more insidious. Cold lava floods, Ilahars, are burying entire villages in liquid rock that moves like a freight train and hardens like cement. And the nightmare has only just begun. November 19th changed everything. Mount Samiru, Java's highest peak at 12,060 feet, exploded with a violence that sent pyroclastic flows racing 10.5 miles from the summit. Among the longest flows of its current eruptive phase, ash columns punch through the atmosphere, climbing 50,000 feet into Indonesian skies, turning day into suffocating night across East Java. But the eruption was just the beginning. When the seasonal rains arrived, they transformed Samiru's fresh volcanic debris into something far deadlier, cold lava floods. These aren't ordinary mudslides. They're concrete speed rivers of destruction, carrying boulders 3.3 feet across and moving at 18.6 miles per hour down river valleys towards sleeping villages. Within hours, the Besuk Kobokan River system became a highway of devastation. Gray-brown torrents, two kilometers wide in places, swept down mountainsides with the sound of thunder, carrying away everything in their path. The Picket Zero Road, the vital lifeline connecting Lumajang and Malang, vanished under waves of hardening volcanic concrete. Indonesia's geological agency raised the alert to level four, the highest possible. People fled to evacuation shelters as entire communities within a 12.4 mile radius found themselves in the path of an unstoppable force. Three villages were buried, roads disappeared, and in the chaos, three people suffered serious burns from contact with the superheated debris. The U.S. Embassy issued emergency warnings on November 20th, advising all American citizens to avoid the vicinity of Mount Sumeru entirely. This wasn't just another volcanic event. This was a disaster machine that had been building for months, waiting for the perfect storm to unleash its fury. But what's happening beneath the surface is even more alarming. Sumeru isn't just erupting. It's been ongoing for you know over 70 of the last 80 years, so it's a very active volcano. Every single day, fresh pyroclastic material cascades down its slopes building an ever-growing stockpile of destruction, waiting for rain to activate it. ...that goes around the volcano, and then you add water to that mix, you can create these deadly, also, um, lahars, or volcanic mud flows that also can be quite hot, and they flow down uh, the slopes. Here's what makes cold lava floods so terrifying. They're not hot lava cooling down. They're a concrete mixer from hell. When heavy monsoon rains hit Samiru's loose volcanic deposits, they create a slurry that behaves exactly like wet concrete. Fluid enough to flow, dense enough to carry massive boulders, and deadly enough to bury anything in its path. Mount Samaru stay active until early hours of December 4th when multiple eruptions occurred. The November 19th eruption deposited fresh material across Samiru's southeastern flanks, precisely where the Besuk Kobokan and Rigoyo River systems channel everything directly toward Lumajang's populated valleys. Satellite imagery shows these deposits as bright gray ribbons snaking down the mountainside, a perfect highway for disaster. The physics are relentless. These flows can carry rocks weighing several tons, moving them like marbles in a river of cement. The mixture is so dense that houses don't just flood, they're crushed and buried under layers of hardening volcanic concrete. Heavy rain and storms have been eroding or removing part of that uh, lava dome, this big block of rocks at the top that was kind of a plug, you know, keeping all the pressure in. And then that's collapsed and then that's released the pressure and caused this larger scale eruption. The November eruption's pyroclastic density currents reach temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius, hot enough to instantly ignite everything they touched. But when mixed with rainwater, they become something even deadlier, a flowing weapon that strikes without warning and leaves behind a landscape transformed into gray wasteland. Seismic monitoring stations recorded continuous avalanche signals throughout November, indicating that Samaru's slopes remain critically unstable. 
Fresh deposits are literally sliding downhill daily, building up the raw material for the next catastrophic Lahar event. But numbers don't capture what this means for the people living in the shadow of this threat. 2.8 million people live within striking distance of Sumeru's killing zone. They're not statistics. They're mothers, children, elderly grandparents waking up every morning wondering if today is the day the mountain comes for them. In Lumajang Regency alone, over 1,116 people are sleeping in evacuation shelters tonight, having fled with nothing but the clothes on their backs. These aren't temporary evacuees, they're climate refugees from a volcano that never sleeps. The human stories emerging from this disaster are heartbreaking. One survivor, identified only as Rena, posted on social media, My house is gone, buried under mud. We ran to the hill just in time, but my neighbor didn't make it. Heartbreaking. Another survivor, Booty, described the terror. The water came so fast mixed with rocks. I carried my child on my back for two kilometers to safety. But perhaps the most haunting account comes from a villager who grabbed his grandmother and climbed a tree just as their house was swept away. They clung to branches for five hours, watching their entire world disappear beneath gray concrete until rescue teams finally reached them. These communities have been traumatized before. Many are survivors of Samiru's December 2021 eruption that killed 69 people. Now they're watching the same valleys fill with death again, triggering PTSD and survivor's guilt that mental health workers say will last for generations. Parents are making impossible decisions, stay and risk death, or abandon the only land their families have ever known. Realize that in order to you know, move the people and evacuate people, they often have to look after their livelihoods. So they've even started to move in some uh, volcanic, around volcanic areas to move the cows and the livestock, knowing that then the people will follow and evacuate you know, their livelihoods. And for those hoping this will simply calm down, the experts have bad news. The scientists watching Sumeru aren't using calm academic language anymore. They're issuing warnings with barely concealed alarm. Eko Budi Lelono, head of Indonesia's geological agency, explained the November disaster in stark terms. A thunderstorm and persistent rain had eroded part of the volcano's lava dome. This caused the dome to collapse, triggering the eruption. What he didn't say, but what every volcanologist knows, is that this process can repeat indefinitely. Thorical Hak, Lumajang's district head, described the situation as very pressing, rapid conditions since it erupted. In bureaucratic language, that's code for, we're losing control. International experts are even more direct. The Earth Observatory's researchers describe lahars as mixtures of water and volcanic debris that behave like rivers of concrete flattening or burying much of what they encounter. They're choosing words like flattening and burying because softer terms don't capture the reality. Dr. Serono, one of Indonesia's leading volcanologists, issued a stark assessment. Sumeru's debris from past eruptions makes these cold lava floods inevitable during heavy rain. Mitigation must improve. When a scientist says mitigation must improve, it means current preparations aren't adequate for what's coming. The Indonesian Meteorology Agency's Dwikarita Karnawati warned in 2024, more rain is expected. Communities near Sumeru must remain vigilant and follow evacuation orders. That warning remains active today. Even international aid workers are struggling with the scope. Suderman Said of the Indonesian Red Cross admitted, we are rushing more rescue vehicles, medical teams, water trucks, and relief to the area. The word rushing suggests they're behind the curve of this disaster because the data shows this situation is getting worse, not better. The timeline reveals a terrifying acceleration. In 1967, Sumeru began its current eruptive phase with small, manageable emissions. For decades, local communities learned to live with minor ash falls and occasional rockfall. But something changed in recent years. The December 2021 eruption killed 69 people and destroyed 2,170 houses. In April 2024, Cold lava floods claimed 11 lives and buried over 500 homes. Now, in November 2025, pyroclastic flows are traveling farther than ever recorded in the current phase, 10.5 miles from the summit. The escalation isn't random. Each major event deposits more material on Semaru's slopes, creating larger stockpiles for future lahars. 
the mountain is literally building its own ammunition for the next attack. Seismic monitoring shows the pattern clearly. Three weeks before the November eruption, sensors recorded minor tremors. Two weeks before, those tremors doubled. In the final week, avalanche signals spiked dramatically as the lava dome became critically unstable. What's most alarming is the frequency. For a, a long time now, and this current eruptive phase started in 2014. And so we've seen, you know, constant kind of activity, but what happened on Saturday was a much larger eruption than this background that they've been having over the last several months. Communities barely have time to rebuild before the next wave of destruction arrives. The monsoon seasons are intensifying too. Climate change is delivering more concentrated rainfall over shorter periods, creating perfect conditions for massive lahar formation. What once required weeks of steady rain now happens in a single storm, and history tells us exactly what patterns like this can lead to. The last time Samiru displayed this level of persistent violence was 1909, when pyroclastic flows killed 208 people and destroyed 38 settlements. That disaster established the template for everything happening today. Continuous eruptions building unstable deposits, followed by catastrophic dome collapse triggered by heavy rainfall. The 1909 event came after decades of minor activity that lulled communities into com Sound familiar? Residents had grown accustomed to daily ash emissions and small explosions. When the mountain finally unleashed its full fury, entire villages vanished in minutes. But 1909 had one crucial difference. Far fewer people lived in the danger zones. Today's Lumajang region supports dense populations precisely because volcanic soil is so fertile. The same forces that create killer lahars also create the rich farmland that draws families into harm's way. And right now, the same warning signs are flashing. Indonesia's alert system sits at level 4, the highest possible rating but even level four alerts can't capture the full scope of this threat. The official exclusion zones protect against pyroclastic flows, but cold lava floods can travel far beyond those boundaries, following river systems deep into populated valleys. Local authorities have established lahar warning systems requiring communities to stay at least 500 meters from riverbanks during high-risk periods. That sounds reasonable, until you realize many villages are built directly along these rivers and 500 meters might as well be 500 miles for families with nowhere else to go. The U.S. Embassy's November 20th advisory tells American citizens to avoid the entire Samiru vicinity. That's diplomatic language for, this situation is too dangerous for our people, and we can't guarantee their safety. Behind the scenes, Indonesian authorities are quietly preparing for something bigger. Three more seismic monitoring stations were deployed in the past month. Emergency supply stockpiles are being expanded. Military units remain on standby for mass evacuations. The alert level remains at yellow for the broader region. But when governments are deploying additional monitoring equipment and expanding evacuation shelters, someone is clearly worried about what might come next. But the real question everyone is asking is whether this mountain will finally calm down, or whether it's building towards something catastrophic. Samiru's future holds three possible paths, and none of them offer comfort. The best case scenario involves gradually declining activity over months or years, allowing communities to return and rebuild. The mountain could exhaust its current supply of unstable material and settle into a quieter phase. But volcanologists see warning signs pointing toward continued escalation. Seismic monitoring shows deep magma movement suggesting this eruptive phase is far from over. Fresh material continues accumulating daily on unstable slopes guaranteeing that every heavy rainfall will trigger new lahars. The middle scenario involves years more of the current pattern, periodic major eruptions followed by months of deadly cold lava floods. Communities would face repeated evacuations, economic collapse, and psychological trauma as the cycle continues indefinitely. The worst case scenario is a massive dome collapse or lateral blast similar to Mount St. Helens in 1980. Samaru's current lava dome is larger and more unstable than it's been in decades. If it fails catastrophically, pyroclastic flows could reach areas never before threatened, while the ash and debris from such an event would create lahar hazards lasting for years. Climate models suggest monsoon rainfall will become more intense and concentrated, creating perfect conditions for massive lahar formation, even from smaller eruptions. 
what required major volcanic events in the past may become routine with ordinary seasonal rains. No one can predict which path Sumeru will take, but the uncertainty itself is a weapon of mass psychological destruction for communities that must live with this threat every single day. And that uncertainty is exactly what makes this so dangerous. As this report is being recorded, Mount Sumeru continues its relentless activity. Ash plumes rise daily from the summit. Avalanche signals echo through monitoring stations. The exclusion zones remain in effect because the mountain shows no signs of calming down. Fresh volcanic material accumulates on Sumeru's slopes every 24 hours, building tomorrow's lahar ammunition while communities sleep. Weather forecasts show more heavy rainfall approaching East Java and every storm carries the potential to mobilize this loose debris into concrete rivers of destruction. The 2.8 million people living in Samiru's shadow face a cruel mathematical reality. They can't evacuate permanently, and they can't predict when the next disaster will strike. Economic necessity pulls families back into danger zones, even after deadly eruptions. Children attend schools built along the very river channels that carry death down from the mountain. Indonesia's geological monitoring systems can detect eruptions, but they can't prevent lahars from forming whenever heavy rain hits fresh volcanic deposits. The country's disaster response capabilities are stretched thin across an archipelago of active volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. International aid organizations are calling this a chronic emergency, a disaster that never truly ends, just cycles between active destruction and anxious waiting. Mercy Corps. Indonesia's Arianto Andrian described the challenge. It was challenging to reach displaced people because lava flows, ashy mud, and fallen trees had blocked roads. The psychological toll is immeasurable. Entire generations are growing up under the shadow of a mountain that has killed their neighbors, buried their schools, and destroyed their homes multiple times. This isn't PTSD from a single event. It's ongoing traumatic stress from a threat that never disappears. Mount Samiru isn't finished, it's reloading. Every day of volcanic activity adds more ammunition for the next catastrophic Lahar event. Every rainstorm could be the trigger that buries more villages under rivers of concrete. This isn't a story with an ending. It's a nightmare that continues while the world sleeps. Stay alert, stay informed. And remember, when the mountain speaks, entire civilizations disappear.